Hey, what's up, guys? Kind of conservative engineer, aka PE exam poppy. Just kidding, nobody calls me that. But let's do another problem that you might encounter, or something like this problem, in your PE civil exam in the morning part. Now, the last video, we determined the maximum moment of this beam with this given loading scenario, and how we solved it was I just took a section cut at that yellow point, analyzed everything to the left, so I just had to solve for this reaction, and I was able to get the beam. Watch my other video if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but in this case, we're going to change it up a little bit, and we're going to pretend NCES is, is asking us for the maximum bending stress. So not the moment, but the moment does come in handy. We're gonna, uh, they're asking us for the bending stress at a given point, which they want the maximum bending stress. So let's take a trip to memory lane. You guys, def well, you guys definitely know the, this equation. All right, and if you do, if you don't, then you have to revisit some statics or uh, mechanics of materials maybe. But yeah, MC over I. This is the bending stress formula. Now, this is not combined stresses. This is just bending stress or pressure, whatever you want to call it. And you can actually find this if you are using your civil engineering reference manual. You'll find this in the CERM 44. Uh, I think it's page 4412. So that will be in that page. But I advise you and I recommend a review course. And the review course, whatever review course you have, will have this in some table. So. MC over I. So M is the moment at that point. C, I'm going to explain in a bit. I is the moment of inertia. But before we even start this, NCS has to give us some details. So how does a beam even look like? Right? So a standard beam would probably look like this. It's going to be like some W shape. Well, this is called a W shape beam. And uh, your neutral axis, kind of like the, uh, like the center, the centroid, their neutral axis is going to be smack in the middle. Why? Because, well, this beam is symmetrical, right? Um, everything to the top, like the, to the top flange, to the bottom flange is the same, same dimension, same area. So your neutral axis is going to be in the middle. C is this distance here. Wait, that just looks very funny. It looks very squiggly. There you go. That's C. But guess what? C could also be this distance here. So what is C? C is your perpendicular distance from the neutral axis, which is this blue thing, to the outermost fiber. Right? What does that mean? This is some fancy terminology that's saying that from the neutral axis, what is the outermost distance, right? Either to the top flange or the bottom flange. In this case, it's symmetrical, so it's either or. Um, and your moment of inertia is going to be a little... You have to do a little bit of work for the moment of inertia here. So you have to do something called the parallel axis theorem. I'm going to talk about that in another video. Um, let's look at another beam scenario. What about if we have something like this, where the top flange is like, I don't know, like let's say the bottom flange is at a weird angle and it's much longer than the top flange. I don't know what this is, but in this case, your neutral axis is not going to be in the middle because it's not a symmetrical beam. And once again, to find the uh, moment of inertia, you have to do the parallel axis theorem which we're not going to do here. I don't think NCS will be that cruel to give you a parallel axis theorem problem in the AM section. I could be wrong, but remember, you only have six minutes of problem. I think what they could do is they could give you a square beam, okay? And a square beam, in this case, it's it's uh, life gets a little bit easier because um, let's say a square beam with, I don't know, dimensions will do, it's a six by six square beam. Let's just say, for the sake of keeping it simple, 6 by 6 square beam. Now we're talking, because now we can actually solve for the moment of inertia. So your moment of inertia is for a square or rectangle is just going to be B H cubed over 12. B is your base, which is this. H is your height. 12 is just some magic number that these scientists that are much smarter than we are figured out. They figured out it's 12. I don't know the proof and theory behind it. Um, that's not the point of this video. Uh, so yeah, B is the bottom. I remember B, the base, the bottom. H is the, the, the height. So, and that's it. So then you have pretty much everything you need now. Now you can just solve for the problem. So one thing you want to do here before you even start, you want to keep the units consistent. 
So normally for bending stress and pressures, they use PSI, which is pounds per square inch. So I'm going to convert this moment to, um, instead of foot pounds, I'm going to do inch pounds. All you got to do is multiply that by uh, this moment by 12 and you get, let's see, what do you get? Like, mm, that's what you get. You get 11,880 inch pounds. And um, now we ha also have the C, which is three inches. Now, why is it three inches? Let's look at the square, right? Remember, remember it's, it's, uh, it's the same size. So the new shaft is going to be right here. So your C is actually going to be your perpendicular distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber. So your C could be either at the top or the bottom. So it could either be this, which is half of six, or this, which is half of six. So C is just three inches. Hope you guys are following and know what I'm talking about. Because if you don't, then you gotta do some studying. So we have the C, and we also have, now we're gonna solve for the I. So I equals BH cubed divided by 12. Let's make this longer. Remember, the B is 6 inches, right? The height is also 6 inches cubed, and we're going to divide that by 12, and we get 108 inches to the fourth. That is your unit for moment of inertia. And that's it. We have everything we need. We're practically done. Now it's just plug and chug. So I'm going to do this at the bottom. This purple, one of my favorite colors. Um, so we have this equals M C over i which equals oh my goodness it is hard to write on microsoft paint <laughs> all right so 11,880 times 3 which is c remember it's your distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber and your i is 108 bam and that is going to give you let's solve it on our calculator Definitely bring a calculator to the exam. <laughs> Hold on, 11,880 times 3 divided by 108. You get 330 PSI, right, which is pounds per square inch. Check it out. We are done. That is your answer. Now it can also be pounds per square foot. Right, you gotta look at your answer choices, see what units they're giving you. So that is gonna be what you're working with. So just to reiterate, um, for this given scenario, they're asking for the maximum bending stress. We found the maximum bending moment. It's a square, wait, what the heck happened here? It's a square beam. And we just found the, the um, distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber, which is three. And we found the moment of inertia, which is 108. We put it into the, our beautiful equation that you could find in the Civil Engineering Reference Manual or actually any textbook, uh, statics, strength, um, me mechanics and materials, or whatever review course, review stuff that they give you. And we got 330 pounds per square inch. Very simple. It literally is going to take you two minutes. Um, me babbling may have pushed this video to nine minutes, but this should take you not more than two minutes to do. And uh, yeah, I hope you find, found this tutorial review kind of helpful. And um, yeah, you guys have a nice day. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.